The epigenome refers to a set of chemical modifications and molecular tags that occur on the DNA and associated proteins known as histones within a cell. These epigenetic modifications do not alter the underlying DNA sequence, but play a crucial role in regulating gene expression and other cellular processes. The epigenome serves as a control system that influences when and how genes are turned on and off, and it can have a significant impact on an organism's development, health, and disease risk. One of the most well-known epigenetic modifications is DNA methylation, which involves the addition of methyl groups to specific cytosine bases in the DNA sequence. DNA methylation can repress gene expression, and is involved in processes such as genomic imprinting and X chromosome inactivation. Genomic imprinting is an epigenetic phenomenon in which certain genes are expressed in a parent of origin specific manner. This means that the expression of imprinted genes is determined by whether the gene is inherited from the mother or the father. The genetic information from one parent imprints and marks the gene in a way that influences its expression. Histones are proteins around which DNA is coiled in the cell nucleus. Chemical modifications to histones, such as acetylation, methylation, and phosphorylation, can alter the structure of chromatin, that is, the complex of DNA and histones, which then impacts gene accessibility. For example, acetylation of histones is associated with gene activation, while deacetylation often leads to gene repression. RNA molecules, such as microRNAs and long non-coding RNAs, can interact with the epigenome to regulate gene expression. MicroRNAs, for example, can bind to messenger RNA and block translation or target messenger RNA for degradation. Chromatin remodeling complexes can physically alter the structure of chromatin to make specific regions of the genome more or less accessible for gene expression. The epigenome also plays a role in how chromosomes are organized in three-dimensional space within the cell nucleus. This spatial organization influences gene interaction and regulation. Now to further understand epigenetic alteration, we have to look into what is known as the information theory of aging. Primarily developed by Thomas Kirkwood in the 1970s, the information theory of aging suggests that age results from the accumulation of errors in an organism's genetic code over its lifespan. The theory proposes that, as cells divide and replicate, the genetic information is subject to errors such as mutations or epigenetic changes. These errors can accumulate over time, leading to a decline in the functioning of cells, tissues, and organs, which ultimately results in aging. The theory also suggests that aging may be a form of error catastrophe, in which the accumulation of errors in the genetic code reaches a critical point, leading to a decline in the overall functioning of the organism. However, in recent times, it has been reported that genetic mutations may not be as catastrophic as first predicted. What might be of greater importance is the maintenance of molecular modifications residing on the surface of DNA. These epigenetic modifications act as an additional layer of genetic control and are vitally important for things such as cellular development and include the maintenance of specific characteristics of specialized cell types. This concept has been expanded further in recent years. You see, in essence, as the body ages, cells forget their original intention as encoded in the epigenome. Perhaps one of the most prominent examples of this in relation to aging is Alzheimer's disease. Aberrant DNA methylation patterns have been observed in genes relating to amyloid precursor protein processing, tau protein regulation, and inflammation, all of which are key factors in Alzheimer's pathogenesis. As age is the single most significant factor in the development of Alzheimer's disease, I posit that tackling the aging process is the single best way to help eradicate this disease, rather than trying to fight it once it has already manifested. One of the most significant advances in this field was the introduction of the Horvath clock, as developed by Steve Horvath. 
It's a tool used to estimate an individual's biological age based on DNA methylation patterns. It measures these at specific CPG sites, which are regions where a cytosine nucleotide is followed by a guanine nucleotide. One study found that the epigenome of a cell could be altered through utilization of something known as OSK-mediated rejuvenation. OSK, short for OSCAR, is a protein found in Drosophila fruit flies that plays a critical role in embryonic development. It's involved in the formation of the posterior pole plasm, which contains specialized factors that specify germ cells in the developing embryo. The concept of OSK-mediated rejuvenation involves introducing OSCAR and other factors into cells, tissues, or organs to reset the developmental or differential state. This process can potentially reverse cellular aging and restore a more youthful and functional state to damaged or aged tissues. In essence, it aims to rejuvenate, as the name implies, or reprogram cells to a more embryonic-like state where they have a greater capacity for growth and repair. By reactivating factors that exist in an embryological state, it has been suggested by some researchers that this technology could be used to regrow limbs in the future in the same way that axolotl and lizards are able to. If the precedent has been set by nature after all, then it doesn't seem outside the realms of possibility that we could utilize this in humans in the future. A key figure to watch here is Harold Katcher. Recently he found results that allowed a 54% epigenetic rejuvenation. In theory, in the future, it may be possible to repeat this process several times over. This does not cure aging per se, but it does open up the possibility of, in essence, resetting ourselves back into younger versions of themselves. There are even those in the longevity community that believe that this alone might be enough to restore the body without even factoring in the other hallmarks of aging. Another key area to keep an eye on is the Sinclair Lab. Their team have developed the relocalization of chromatin modifiers, or RCM hypothesis, which suggests that relocalization of chromatin factors in response to DNA damage may be a chief cause of aging. You see, in response to a DNA break, proteins that regulate gene expression move to help repair the break, which often results in gene expression changes. This process is usually reset upon completion of DNA repair, however this does not always work correctly in older cells. Not all proteins return to their original position, leading to gene expression changes and a loss in cell identity. To test this hypothesis, they developed ICE, which stands for Inducible Changes in the Epigenome. This technique allows researchers to induce DNA breaks. The result of this was a drive in epigenetic changes that accelerated aging. Quite a famous picture from the lab is the image of these two mice. By using ice, they were able to rapidly increase the rate of aging. These two mice are siblings from the same litter, yet you can see that one is drastically older looking than the other. And it's not just an aesthetic change either. The mouse on the left is healthier, has more energy, and is fitter overall. Perhaps the most impressive piece of research to come out of their lab is optic nerve regeneration. Nerves are notoriously difficult to repair, yet they were able to repair neurodegenerative damage in the optic nerve of mice, restoring eyesight to blind ones. By developing human-compatible viral vectors, it may well be possible to deliver reprogramming genes to specific tissues or even the entire body, causing those cells to act younger because they are actually younger in the epigenetic sense. One I'm particularly enamored with and one to definitely keep a close eye on in the coming years.